Hi and welcome to Siska Stitches channel. In today's video, I'll be showing us how to draft this style of trousers, okay? It is called paper bag pants. And we're going to see how to draft the pattern for this tutorial. If you're new to my channel, you're welcome. Please click the subscribe button and click the bell so that you get updates when I post new videos. And now let's get right into the tutorial. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to be putting the measurements that I'm going to use on the screen, okay? So far, I have some lines drafted here and I'm going to explain what they mean. So right here is the top line. The reason why I marked it here is so that the pattern paper is going to be enough for the length of my trousers. So I have a half an inch at the top here, which is going to be for seam allowance. I have a half an inch at the edge here, which is also going to be for seam allowance. So what I did was to mark from here, this place is going to be representing my waist. So I marked from here to my hip and that for me is eight inches okay and then i also marked from my waist up until 10 inches which is going to form my crotch length or crotch depth what i did next was to mark my hip circumference divided by four my hip circumference is 43 43 divided by four is 10.75 I added a half an inch ease to that, making that 11.25 because you don't want to sew your trousers and then it ends up not fitting. So it's nice that you add that ease. You can always shape that out if you actually do not need it. So I have 11.25 at my waist. I have 11.25 at my hip. I have 11.25 here at my crotch area. Okay, and I drew a straight line across right here. Now, the reason why I'm marking 11.25 across waist, you know, to hip is because I'm making a paper bag pant, and this pant is not going to have a zipper, it's going to have an elasticated waist. Okay, it's going to have elastic at the waist. That is what I mean by elasticated. So that is why we are going with this. So now that this is done, what I'm going to do is to come right here to mark the crotch curve. And I'm going to mark one and a half inch at about a 45 degree angle from this crotch line here. The part that intersects with this um, straight line that we have here. So I mark 1.5 inches. Now what I did for my crotch extension, because we have a crotch extension after this line, was to mark three inches. And this is what I have, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is to create my crotch curve, you know, connecting this line, following this one and a half inch that we marked here up until this point. After drawing the curve, I'm going to come right at my crotch area, measure the whole crotch, and I have 14.25 inches. We are going to divide that into two. And that should give us 7.125. I'm going to mark that 7.125 and I'll be marking it from this point here. I mark that right here, okay? I'll repeat the same thing at the hip area. So I'll be marking 7.125. And I'm going to draw a straight line across the three points all the way to the bottom of my trouser pattern. After joining the points, this is it right here. What I'm going to do next is to mark my darts and I'll be going with a dart of half an inch on both sides of this line. Even though we did not add that allowance to our waist, the excess from the hip measurement is going to you know, factor that in. So I'll come right here and mark my darts like this, okay, half an inch on both sides. And I'll be going with a dart length of 5.5 inches. And what I'm going to do next is to connect the two points. The next thing I'm going to do is to mark my thigh circumference. So my thigh is usually about three inches from my crotch area. So I'm just going to mark three inches below my crotch, just like this, okay? And I'll go on to join the points. So my thigh circumference is 25. 25 divided by two is 12.5. Now what we are going to do is to find the midpoint of 12.5, which is 6.125. Okay, we're going to put that 6.125 in this midline here, and then we're going to mark 12.5 right at the beginning, okay? So I mark 12.5 here, and I mark the beginning of my tape rule right here. Then I'm going to mark my waist to knee. Now, this my waist to knee measurement is actually above the knee okay you don't want to do this measurement below the knee you want to do it above the knee so mine is 21 inches but i'm still going to come up by one inch to make that 20 inches okay so i mark 20 inches here and i'm going to draw a straight line across 
My knee circumference is 20. I'm going to divide 20 by 2, and that is 10. Midpoint of 10 is 5. So what I'm going to do is place the midpoint of 10 on this line that we have here. So I'll mark 10 inches here and mark the beginning of the tape row right here. Then we're going to move to our ankle. My waist to my ankle is 38 inches. So I'm going to come right here and mark 38 inches. Okay. And what I'm going to do is to draw a line across this point. Now that I've marked my ankle area, what I'm going to do next is to mark my ankle circumference. My ankle circumference is 14. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So I'm going to find the midpoint of 7, which is 3 and a half. So I mark the beginning of my tape row here. I mark 7 inches here. And this is what we have. So what I'm going to do next is to connect my crotch to my tie, okay, to my knee and to my ankle. Then I'll come right here. What I'll be doing at this point is connecting my hip to my thigh. I'm going to bypass my crotch. So connect hip to thigh to knee all the way to my ankle right here. So after connecting, this is what I have for my front pattern. This is what it looks like. What I'm going to do at this moment is to add a half an inch seam allowance at the outer seam here. Okay, I already have half an inch at the top. I'll add half an inch at my crotch area, at my inseam leg right here. And for the bottom, I'm going to be adding one and a half inches. Okay, and you want to make sure that you are adding this seam allowance at a slant because of the ankle area. You can see it's sort of slanted a bit. So it is actually better that you add your seam allowance at a slant so that hemming is not going to be, you know, hell for you. So I just create a slant. The more slanted the part of the trouser, the more slant your allowance should be, okay? So here is my one and a half inch seam allowance at the bottom right here. So after adding my seam allowance all around my pattern, this is what I have. Then I'll go on to cut out my trouser pattern following the seam allowance mark that we have here all around this pattern. So for my back pattern, I just placed my front pattern on it like this, okay? And I had to add another piece of paper in addition to the length of my pattern paper so we'll be able to draft the back very well. So what I'm going to do for my back pattern is to do a crotch extension. So I'm going to come right here. Remember that this my pattern has seam allowance, okay? So I'm going to come right at this point, place my tape roll on the main trouser pattern itself, not the seam allowance, okay? And I'll be adding two inches for my back crotch extension. All right, so I'm going to mark this point and then I'm going to come half an inch lower so this is the point that we are going to make use of. The next thing I'm going to do is to come to the waist area of my trouser pattern. Now, from the main trouser pattern right here at the center front, I'm going to measure to the middle of the dart and I have four inches. Then I'll divide that into two, making that two inches. And then I'm going to come up from my waist area. Now remember, not the seam allowance. I'm going to come up from my waist area by two and a half inches. So I just mark that right there. What we want to do next is to mark the waist measurement. I remember we are using our hip measurement as our waist measurement because of the type of trouser that we are making. So I'll come to my waist area. I'm going to extend the line using the front pattern as a guide. Let me just come here and measure my trouser waist. So inclusive of that, I have 11.25 inches. So I'm just going to place my tape rule where I marked the 2.5 inches upwards. And I should be measuring 11.25 inches that should land on this line that I have marked here. That is very, very important. So I'll just come right there and mark that 11.25. And as you can see, that is what we have. So what I'm going to do next to create the crotch curve for the back is to mark the diagonal line and for the back i go with two inches so i just place my tape rule right here i place the two inch mark here and then i mark my two inches so at this point i'm going to lift up my front pattern paper for us to create the crotch curve i'm going to grab my ruler you can even use a curved ruler if you have that okay so i'm just going to place it like this and then i'm going to connect it so we're connecting waist to the two inch diagonal line that we marked here. And then I'm going to connect this one to my crotch 
depth. So just like this. Now after connecting, this is what our back crotch curve will look like. The next thing I'm going to do is to connect here to here to have our waist, okay? So I'll just go on to do that. Now that we have our crotch curve done, what I'm going to do next is to connect the crotch curve to our knee area with a slant. And after drawing this mark, I'm going to draw a straight line using the front pattern as a guide, okay? So just create a straight line like this. Now that we have done the inseam leg, we are going to come right here to mark the out seam. And what I'm going to do is to come to my hip, I'm going to mark one inch, come to my knee, mark one inch. And then I'll come to my ankle and mark one inch. So what I'm going to do next is to connect it, okay, from ankle to knee, to hip and then from hip all the way to my waist right here so after adding my one inch allowance seam allowance this is what we have though our trouser pattern is going to be sewn with a half an inch at both the inseam and the out seam so this is what my trouser pattern looks like okay i'm going to come next to the waist we are going to mark the darts and what i'm going to do in order for us to do that is to use my front as a guide and I'm going to come right here, measure what I have, I use the front as a guide. So I'm measuring from the main trouser pattern, all right? And for me, that is four inches. So I come right at the back, I'm going to mark four inches, then I'm going to mark half an inch on both sides, okay? The, that length is 5.5 inches. I'm going to come right here and mark 5.5 inches. So I mark 5.5 inches here. All right, and you need to make sure that whatever you are marking is sort of parallel to this line here. So that is how I usually mark mine. So once I mark that, I'm going to join my dots like this. My dots like this. Now that we have our dots marked out, the next thing I'm going to do is to add seam allowance at the top here and seam allowance at the crotch area here. This is because when we are taking our measurements, we did not add seam allowance to those points, okay? We measured straight from the main trouser measurements, not the seam allowance part. So we're not doing anything to the inseam, we're not doing anything to the outer seam because we have added seam allowance that we need. So I'm going to come right here, mark half an inch, okay? Mark half an inch here. So I'm going to come right here, I'll add half an inch at the crotch curve, which is what I have done come at the bottom of the crotch curve here we're going to add half an inch upwards so i'm just going to connect the points like this to create our seam allowance for the back crotch curve then i'll come right here and join this point so after joining, what I'm going to do is to cut out my back pattern following the markings that I have made right here, okay? So after cutting out my back pattern, this is what I have. So what I'm going to do now is to cut the pockets for this pattern that we are making and we are going to need to use our front pattern to draft the pocket. So we are cutting sort of like a patch pocket and the way we are going to do it, you can decide to um run your pocket from the dart okay if you wanted to cover the dart all the way to the side seam or you can just measure how much you want your pocket to cover that is definitely up to you so from the picture on the screen you can see that the pocket is actually running from the dart all the way to the side seam so that is exactly what i'm going to do and you can equally you know let your pocket run as long as your hip so that is what i'm going to be using for mine my pocket length is going to be all the way up to my hip and it's going to be as wide you know all the way to my um that area okay, so before i go on to um measure this part that we need you actually need to close your darts okay so you know from where to where you're measuring from so you can see that after closing my dart it means i'll be measuring from this edge here up until this dart leg okay i will measure the middle of the dart so i'll just measure from here up until this dart leg i'll make sure to add a half an inch seam allowance so basically if i'm going to be drafting out this pocket i'm going to measure from the edge of the 
trouser here that's the seam allowance here up until the middle of the dart this middle of the dart part is going to serve as seam allowance for this side of the pocket so right here is my pocket piece with a half an inch seam allowance here half an inch seam allowance here half an inch seam allowance here and half an inch seam allowance at this side now i want to quickly mention something that if you are going to be cutting any side of your pocket piece on fold I will actually advise that you do it along this side. That's the part that is going to stay at the dark area for a neater finish. Okay. So let's say I want to cut this part on fold. You can see that I have removed the half an inch seam allowance that is here before. Because we are cutting it on fold, you are not going to need that seam allowance. So for clarity purpose, I'm just going to come right at this point and write on fold. So that I'll cut this side on fold and I'm going to cut off this seam allowance because I will not be needing it anymore. So what I'm going to do next is to now determine the opening of the pocket. So I'm going to come right here. You can actually use your hand as a guide to how wide you want your pocket to be. So if I'm using my hand, I'm going to come about four inches from the edge. If you don't want it to be too wide, you can go with three inches. All right. But in order for your hand to enter your pocket, you have to go, you know, somewhat deeper. So I'm going to mark this point right here. Okay, so you can see that my hand is entering inside here and here. Okay, I don't know if you can see this part. So if I come here and measure, I'm having about, yeah, five and a half inches. So I'm just going to correct this to five and a half inches and I'm going to join this point to this point in a triangular way so you can decide to curve it out like this or just draw a straight line across and then I'm going to cut this out so after cutting right here is my pocket piece all right and remember your pocket piece is going to be cut on fold if it's not going to be cut on fold you are going to need to cut out two pieces of this so i hope my explanation makes sense to us so here's my pocket piece the next one i'm going to do is to cut our waistband and the belt loops my waistband is measuring 35 inches in length my waist circumference is 34 so 34 plus half an inch on both sides that will make it 35 inches now for the width of the waistband what I have here is three and a half inches now One and a half inch is for the paper bag effect. You can actually decide to make yours a little wider Okay for the waistband itself I'm going with 1.25 inches and then I have half an inch seam allowance right here Which will be joined to the waist of the trouser. So this part right here is going to be cut on fold the next i'm going to explain to us is the belt loop of this trouser if you look at the picture on the screen you can actually see that the belt loop is running from the pockets area from beginning of pocket to the end around the waist okay you can actually decide to cut your belt loop separately okay you can try to cut it separately as you can see here or you can decide to cut it together with your pocket piece the width is the length of the pocket piece and then the actual length of the belt loop is two inches okay so i have half an inch seam allowance here and half an inch seam allowance here basically half an inch seam allowance all around this part now if you decide that you want to join your belt loop to your pocket piece what i'm going to do is to place my belt loop like this okay so i'm going to make sure that the half an inch at the bottom is overlapping with the half an inch at the pocket piece and what i'm going to do is to tape it down together so that we have one whole piece both belt loop and pocket piece at the same time so after joining this is what we have we have our pocket piece and our belt loop attached together so this is what we are going to be cutting on fabric and like i said earlier if you're going to cut this on fabric you actually need to cut this on fold the last thing is going to be our belt piece and that is quite easy for us so if i'm going to be going with a belt piece for this um tutorial i'll be going with a belt piece of about 1.25 inches okay the same width as the waistband of this trouser so 1.25 inches for my belt piece and it is going to be as long as up to 50 inches for us to be able to create that tie for it so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did kindly give us a thumbs up subscribe to my channel turn on the bell so you get updates when i post new videos and i'm going to see you guys in my next tutorial bye